Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on OCV timing. So the next step is to take this particular graph and implement on this particular setup timing analysis that we did in the last video. Okay. So how, how do we go about it? So first of all, this curve says that any cell, any logical or combinational cell that was designed to give a delay of 100 picosecond will give a delay of 120 picoseconds max and give a minimum delay of 80 picoseconds. So there will be so so the a cell which was designed to be 100 picosecond will give a delay anywhere between 80 picoseconds to 120 picoseconds because it's on on a chip and on the chip we have seen several types of variations. So as a result of that, a cell which is designed for 100 picosecond will give a delay in this particular range where the worst delay will be 120 picosecond and the best delay will be 80 picoseconds. Okay, so the next step is to implement this OCV or this 20% variation on the setup timing analysis. So there are there are uh, there are four possible options that we can do it, considering that this data uh, arrival time and data required time are two different sections. We can do we can do there is four possible combination that we can go for. So the first combination will be you increase the data arrival time and the data required time by 20%. Basically increase each and every delay values which is present over here by 20% and do the same thing over here. Okay, that is first possible option. The second possible option is increase the delay of data arrival time by 20% and reduce the delay of data required time by 20%. That is second possible option. Okay, the third possible option is you reduce the data arrival time by 20% and you reduce the data required time delays by 20%. Sorry, reduce the data arrival time by 20% and increase the delay of data required time by 20%. That is the third possible option. And fourth possible option is you reduce the data arrival time and data required time delays by 20%, both of them. Okay, so when we increase or reduce the delay, there is there is there is a particular term that is used for uh, that is that is used for this kind of scenario. So basically, if you if you see over here, we are taking the data arrival time or the data required time and reducing the 20 and reducing the delays by 20% only in the clock path. So there is a term that is associated with this particular thing and it's called let's let's try to bring that over here. So when you when you uh, so we have to do a realistic and conservative analysis before that let's try to understand what the term that we have been talking about. So when you try to reduce your data required time delay. So for example, if you take this data required time clock cells and reduce each and every delay by 20% we call it as clock pull in so basically it says that as a delay which was 13 picoseconds will now be pulled in by 20% so it will no more be 13 picosecond it will be somewhere less than 13 picosecond it will be this will be somewhere less than 43 picoseconds this cell will show less than uh, uh, some delay which is less than 21 picoseconds so essentially the clock path you are pulling in the clock path reducing the delay of each and every cell in the clock path says that you are pulling in the clock delay so that's why it's called clock pull in okay now if you try to increase the arrival time of the of the uh, increase the arrival time or oh, sorry increase the delays of the cells in the arrival time you are actually increasing the delay of each and every each and every clock cell over here and that's why that term is referred to as clock push out so basically, you are pushing the delay of of this particular cell by 20%. You are make it is not 55 picosecond, but it is more than 55 picosecond. This is not 32 picosecond, but somewhere more than 32 picosecond. So each and every clock cell or each and every element over here, the delay of that element is being increased by 20%, and and that essentially says that you are actually pushing the clock. Okay, we'll just we'll uh, for uh, in in a second we'll be looking into the diagrammatical representation of the same. So these are two terms that is available, which is clock pull in and clock push out. And eventually we'll come to know that this particular scenario will be giving us the more realistic and conservative analysis. We'll 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 come to that in a bit. So before that, this particular scenario when we say it as clock pull in. Whenever the data required time or whenever the cells in the data required time are reduced by twenty percent the delays are reduced by 20% you are actually making this edge or making this particular clock edge to pull close towards the launch clock edge that's why we call it as clock pull in okay on the other hand if you have this particular edge basically if you have this particular clock cells and you increase its delay by 20% you are actually pushing this edge towards more towards the capture capture clock that's why we call it as clock push out and in most of the scenarios in most of the industries as well they uh, we prefer to do the 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 pulling and pushing in the clock network delay clock clock path only some prefer to do it in a data path also but mo but the clock path is definitely derated 
by 20% either on, on either side or by some percentage which is uh, which is recommended by their respective foundries in our case it's 20% okay so 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 many do it on the clock path Mo, some of them do on the data path as well but the clock path definitely are derated and that that's when we call it as clock push out or clock pull in okay so these are the terms that is used being that is being used for for the for the pushing and pulling of the clocks okay so with that said we'll be we'll very soon come to know that why it is being why why this is being the more realistic and conservative analysis that we have been doing okay so now what we'll do is let's do one one of it first of all let's take this particular area or this particular data required time or the cells which is present in this particular data required time and do a pull in of this particular clock okay what we'll do we'll try to reduce the delays of each and every elements over here by 20 percent so basically we'll be pulling in the clock and we'll very soon come to know how pulling in the clock gives us a more realistic analysis or more worst case analysis okay so let's take this area and we'll pull in each and every cell delay by 20%. So with that said, the delays of each and every cell reduced by 20% will show some something like this. So it basically says any cell, this particular element, which had a delay of 13 picosecond, now has a delay of 10 picosecond. It is being reduced by 20%. So this particular cell, which had a delay of 43 picosecond, is now having a delay of 34 picosecond. So 34 picosecond is 20% less than 43 picosecond. You can quickly do a math on this one. So 34 pic or one six, uh, 16 picosecond is 20% less than 21 picosecond. Similarly, this cell 66 picoseconds is 20% less than 83 picoseconds and so on. Okay, so, so if you note over here, we have just modified the clock network over here and that's why it's called as the clock pull-in. The, 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 the clock period will, will be still 1NS, the setup time and the setup uncertainty will, key, will leave it as it is. Only the clock network delay has been pulled in by 20%. Each and every cell has been pulled in by 20%. Okay. Now, if you add up add up all these numbers over here, you get a data required time of 1.0944 nanosecond. Okay. The data arrival time remains the same, and the data required time is now 1.0944 nanosecond. With this particular equation or with this particular numbers for data arrival time and data required time, the slag that you see over here is negative 20 picosecond or negative 0 0.0206 nanosecond and this is a worry for us because with this kind of analysis the analysis that we that we saw in this table that that proved us that the system will be able to work at 1 gigahertz but now when we put in when when we uh, when we in introduce the ocv concept on the data required time or oh, sorry on the data required time we see that the slack is varying by the slack is now negative 20 picosecond which means the clock period will be uh, the clock period which was 1 nanosecond will now increase to 1 1.0206 nanosecond and that will bring down your frequency it would be roughly around let's say 980 or 950 megahertz or in that range so this is the impact of of looking into the OCV timing and basically this is a more realistic analysis because these cells might be sitting on that area of the chip where you see a 20% reduced delay so this scenario is very much possible on a chip okay but there is again a catch in this particular analysis so what we'll do is we'll leave it at this point since we know that how how the OCV numbers the how when we introduce the OCV timing or the OCV concept in a setup timing analysis that that how how that degrades the slack and that becomes a point of worry for us okay so we'll leave that particular uh, 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 leave that particular thought in mind for now and we'll try to move on into the into the catch that we'll be seeing in this particular in this particular analysis so there is some tricky there's some trick thing that we have missed over here and let's try to identify that trick or identify that catch in the next video thank you